trying to think about that and I don't think I actually have seen an elephant cough before so that's quite an interesting one I'm not sure that I have just trying to think back about that but no I don't think I actually have heard an elephant cough I've heard them splutter and blow their trunks and get rid of mucus out of their trunks but never actually cough so that's quite an interesting phenomenon never really thought about it either I suppose it does happen you can see Fang is just majestically striding we went down nice and low so we could get this sort of ground level view of her moving through the grass and isn't that beautiful as she strides off it would be nice if she was facing the other way and coming towards us but it's still very 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 pretty it's as majestic as you're going to get and that sort of scene out of Africa of that grass and this big elephant striding through it really is very cool indeed now the whole herd is starting to just move up towards quarantine so it should be very pretty Nilia, yeah, you're wondering why the tusk is growing in a different direction well it's just an abnormality so it might have been when she was younger for some reason she used that tusk and it kind of twisted in its and turned in the actual s sort of gum line and that's why it's now grown in, a, in the odd way or it could just be a defect of that particular tooth so you know as people we have teeth that grow in odd directions and so it can sometimes happen I've seen it with elephants before there's quite a few elephants that have tusks that grow in odd directions like this but she's probably one of the most prominent ones that we have in this area just because of how long her tusk has actually gotten now they are starting to disappear a little bit so I want to try to keep up with them so I'm just going to turn around and try and get myself back with the herd itself like I say we were sort of down much lower than them because I just wanted to get that sort of eye level shot and get that lower sort of feeling just to show you how big they actually feel it's I often find when you get a bit lower with elephants they feel a lot sort of larger than what they actually are now it's a little bit bumpy where we are the elephants have done a bit of work on this and also with the amount of sort of rain that we've got and the soil that we're on here is very very sort of soft so it gets eroded quite quickly and you get these striations so I do apologize if the camera is bouncing around a little bit there we go right so we're gonna try get our better view of our Ellie's and while we do that let's go back to Jamie with her elephants road but she was lying down and she seems to really like to lie down which is quite strange for females generally females don't actually do that very often they tend to like stay standing so that their young ones are completely protected but she just stood up again now I wonder if she wasn't having a little dust bathe on the road and just found it much easier to stand I mean to sit rather than standing but the whole herd is out here and we've got such cute little babies look at this so cool we're being very very spoilt with elephants lately and this herd is fast becoming one of my absolute favorite herds to spend time with there are just so many elephants in it and they all seem to have characters and the fact that you've got this a sort of iconic leader and lots of babies in the herd it really is a very very special group of elephants you can see they're still covered in mud some of them have done a better job of dust bathing than others this particular young bull has definitely not I mean sorry cow I don't know why I said that's a bull but this is a cow I don't know she hasn't seemed to be doing too many dust bathing at all So Riti, you're wondering how the elephants keep themselves cool in the summer. Well, Riti, it's a lot harder. You can imagine when the temperatures start to push into almost 50 degrees and 120 degrees Fahrenheit, being a big, large gray animal like this is not easy at all. So what they'll do is they'll spend a lot of time in deep shade. So during the hot parts of the day, they try to find shade. They spend a lot more time around water where they'll come and drink and they'll spray water on those ears and try and cool that blood in the ears a lot. You'll also find the movement of the ears a lot more substantial than what you see now. Most of these elephants this afternoon you can see their ears are hardly moving every now and then you'll see a flutter of the ear but it's really sort of null and void in comparison to the summer the elephants ears will just flap non-stop as they try and heat cool themselves down and so that network of veins on the backside of the ears is vitally important to keeping 
their blood network very very cool and you'll find that they can process their entire sort of uh, volume of blood within a series of three to four flaps which means that they can cool the body by as much as two degrees centigrade in those four flaps which is really very 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 interesting indeed now and see if I can't get towards the front edge of the herd and we can then watch them all kind of coming across quarantine clearings because it's going to be spectacular when they do what I'm trying to do is just try to get around them so that we don't end up pushing them in any way. Now it's just Fang that we need to worry about here in front and then we'll have broken past them. And this, like I say, I was hoping they were going to come up here so I'm really happy that they did because it should be very, very pretty when they are on these open sections. So let's just get a little bit further forward, Jandre, before we swing around. Gonna try and just loop around a little bit. So CJ, you're wondering how many different herds we follow. Well, CJ, we've got a few herds that we recognize. There's the short trunk herd that James had this morning, and they're a beautiful sort of group that we often get. Now this is going to be amazing. Hold on, I'm just going to get us into position before these elephants arrive in this big open clearing, which should be as good as it gets. So we have the short trunk herd, we have Fang's herd, and then there's another truff herd that's got a female with very long, very straight tusks so those are the three that I kind of recognize it's difficult because we do get lots of other elephants coming through but from time to time we do sort of recognize some of them and it's normally because they've got an identifying feature so like Fang with this tusk that grows this odd way but look at all these elephants coming into the light at the background there as well it is so so beautiful so you can see look at that they're all just striding right out in the open and there's the rest of the herd in the background you can get a true sense of just how many elephants are actually here. Really, really cool. She's just stopping now. I wonder if she's going to sit down here. Looks like she almost might be sitting. What's wrong, Fang? You... Hmm. Something doesn't seem right. She's busy. It looks like she actually has quite bad diarrhea, which is not a good sign... Well, what's wrong, girl? Something is... You see, she's now gone backwards. She just had some sort of discharge that came out of her rear end. And she's actually come back to sniff it now. I wonder if she's not got a bit of a tummy problem at the moment. It sometimes does happen where they get some sort of issue. And then she'll find that she's kind of just investigating to see what's going on. But it's very strange to see elephants having diarrhea. You do sometimes see it in the summer months when they eat vegetation that's got a lot of moisture in it. Do you have a wound maybe somewhere there that you're worried about, girl? Because she's busy spraying dust on it now. Wow, this is so cool. I wonder what's wrong. But you can actually see there's still some stuff coming out from underneath her tail. That is of liquid nature, and I don't know what it is. I've honestly never seen that before. She looks healthy, though. She doesn't look as though she's in any way and sort of got skinny or anything like that. And maybe just eaten something not quite right, and it's taking its toll a little bit. But she definitely has got diarrhea at this stage, which is not ideal. You can see she's not comfortable even when she's trying to go to the toilet. She kind of is pushing her back legs down a little bit. Shame, girl, are you not feeling 100%? Like I say, it can happen that they do sometimes get a bit of diarrhea, but she's not in bad condition in any way, so I wouldn't be, I'm not worried about her. It's just that she's in probably a little bit of discomfort is all. Are you going to sit down there, girl? What's wrong? But you can see that stuff that is dripping down from underneath her tail there every now and then. And I can honestly say I've never seen this before, so I'm not sure what that could be a sign of. But there you can see a bit of mucus coming down. So she's obviously had a bit of diarrhea today, and that's causing her discomfort. Is that why you're trying to lie down every time? Now, she won't give birth, obviously, through that area, so it's not that she's pregnant or anything like that, in case some of you are wondering. But it's very, very odd. She's definitely not comfortable with whatever it is. 
let's see if she's going to lie down. I just want to spend a bit of time with her and just see if she's not going to just settle down. She might find that she just wants to rest a little bit. And you can see the herd is not sure what's going on. Some of them have moved off a little bit. Others are standing and watching. I think they're wondering what is going on with their leader at the moment. She is the matriarch of this herd. You find normally when she moves, the rest do. And they all seem a bit kind of confused by it. And a lot of the females have actually come closer to where she is. I wonder if she's not communicating with them, telling them I'm not quite right, I need to rest here. And the rest of them will slowly start to come this way. She looks like she's going to sit down again. So, John, you're wondering how old Fang is. Well, John, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. It's quite a difficult thing to age elephants correctly, and particularly sort of el older elephants. Um, she is a much older individual. She's not a young female. So I would say she's probably, if I had to guess, I would reckon that she's probably... Oh, what's wrong, girl? No, you're not feeling well. Shame. She's. seems like she's really not feeling it this afternoon she's normally quite an active female but you can see she's kind of just lying there now and i wonder if she's not going to just spend the night relaxing it's much like us as people when we're not well we also we don't feel like being too sort of mobile you'll find sometimes she'll then just lie down like this and take it easy so a lot, a lot of you are saying that you're very worried about her. Well, I don't think you need to be worried just yet. Like I said, it is not uncommon for an elephant to get diarrhea. They do sometimes get a little bit ill, and they find that they just need to rest a little bit. So I don't think we need to stress too much. I will let the relevant authorities also know that she's kind of displaying this kind of behavior, just in case there is something that they want to come and check on her. As I say, I'm not a vet, so I don't really know what signs could be if she is in distress, but she's definitely taking it very very easy and she's not pregnant that's for sure i can see that she doesn't have a very swollen sort of system so it's not that she's going to be giving birth by the looks of it but she definitely is trying to take it easy and the, the interesting thing is the other elephants and their sort of response at this stage a lot of them have just spread out and are feeding and they're not really moving too far away but there's also not a massive concern if she was really really ill and she was really struggling you would find all the other elephants would have probably come to her aid and come to defend her whereas you can see they're still busy feeding so i don't think it's anything to worry about just yet elephants are very perceptive to one another and i've seen when an elephant has actually died the herd comes right around them and comes to where that elephant is and if you see them with sick young individuals so sometimes when they give birth to babies that are not well then you'll find the whole herd is there and protecting so i don't think they're too stressed about it at this stage but it is definitely interesting behavior so francis you're asking if she could be having a miscarriage i suppose it is possible but like i say the discharge that we're seeing is coming out of her anal area and not out of where she would have a baby so i don't think so but there we go she's up again what's wrong girl are you uncomfortable like i say you never know she might have eaten something they in fact we were talking about poison apples this morning and that elephants can eat them and maybe she's just had one too many of those and that's what's affecting her bowels a little bit but you can see she sniffs where she's been lying you see that so she's almost as though to work out what is actually coming out of me i'm not quite sure and she's talking a lot. She's lots of low grumbles as well. So it's interesting to see. And I'm going to spend time with her and just see how she does. And I hope she's okay. It is very concerning that she doesn't seem quite herself this afternoon. Right, well, while we kind of sit with Fang and see how she does and how the rest of the herd responds, let's go across to James, who I believe has found some elephants of his own. Well... The rest of the herd has disappeared and Fang is all by herself and is still not looking well. She's now all of a sudden just seemed to perk up, but she's been sitting in the exact same spot the entire time we've been standing here and has been kind of up and down and lying down and really hasn't looked great. But now all of a sudden she's up and moving as though nothing is wrong. So I'm not sure what's going on with her at the moment, but definitely is not 100%. And it is concerning. I don't like seeing animals in distress in any way and 
it worries me a little bit because she is such a huge part of this whole safari live family and i know many of you have watched her many times and she's such a beautiful animal that it can be a bit distressing and i'm like i say a bit concerned about her and we'll de we've definitely let everybody know that should know that there is this sort of symptoms playing out and we'll see what they say because this time of the year you can sometimes get sort of anthrax that can come out because of the spores that are in hidden in the ground and it sometimes does happen with an elephant getting it so you can see it from time to time but i don't know if it's that she doesn't seem that bad but it's still not 100% that's for sure now I'm gonna try and just get way ahead of her and then turn off she seems all of a sudden to be quite sprightly though so Lisa you're wondering what she could eat to make her tummy better well it's unlike humans where they can just kind of go and get something to sort of nibble on or some sort of food item it really is not that easy for them so you'll find that sometimes they just try and get plain leaves or grass um, they'll also sometimes even eat soil there's microbes in soil and varying sort of nutrients that they don't get from a lot of other things that can help but isn't that beautiful with the sort of sunset in the background that's very pretty she all of a sudden seems much better though she seems to be moving a lot more at one point she almost looked a bit wobbly on her feet but now she seems to be striding and is almost back to her sort of normal confident self which is quite something now I'm gonna just try and reposition us again because of the light that we've got on her over her shoulder there is very pretty now the rest of her herd just disappeared off into this area here on our left hand side so it almost like she's realized the herd has now drifted away and that she's going to try and catch up with them but there's another young bull over here so let's see how this sort of interaction goes he's coming back towards where she is there's been lots of grumbles that have been going on and she's been calling quite a bit and i wonder if the herd might not turn and come back towards where she is but here we go so she's just under the marula tree at the moment hello boy are you going to go and see what's going on with fang So Izzy, you're wondering how big is Fang's herd in numbers? Well, earlier I was trying to count them and I honestly, I was busy doing it when Fang unfortunately started to show that she wasn't well. So I didn't get it the whole way, but I think there should be around just over 30 of them in that herd. So well, next time we see the whole herd out in the open, we'll have to count them for you to make 100% sure, but somewhere around there. Now, if it wasn't for the fact that Fang wasn't feeling very well, that would be one of the most beautiful pictures ever the two sort of elephants under that sunset in a big marula tree it really is a very special picture now let's see the interaction between these two genre i'm going to try just go forward a little bit so that you don't have that bush in your way now you see he's busy sniffing her as well just trying to see and work out you can actually there's a really cool picture of just how big fang actually is look at her size the male's on the left and that's not a particularly young male that male is probably already in his 20s he's a big boy but you can see she's a similar sort of size and look how he's smelling her now she's is dribbling from ah, look at that that's interesting maybe she is having a miscarriage you see look she's dribbling from there we go and he's busy smelling it and it's a clear liquid there we go you can see i wonder if there's a little bit of blood in there as well maybe she is having a miscarriage it's possible earlier it looked like it was coming from below her tail but she's definitely dribbling from there and you can see look she's now smelling where she's just urinated or dribbled from and now she's picking up dust and it looks like she might spray it under her tummy you see that this is the most interesting behavior i have never in my life witnessed it before and i honestly cannot tell you what it could be it really is quite strange what is wrong girl what is going on she's not pregnant enough to be giving birth that's for sure the male seems to be sniffing it and becoming almost aroused by this all which is quite strange and look at the dust the gold dust as well like i say if it wasn't for the fact that she the sort of symptoms are worrying and that she looks a little uncomfortable it would be probably one of the most magical elephant scenes i've had in a long time just that setting sun in the background but she seems like she's okay now she's definitely walking a lot better than what she was earlier let's see it would be a massive turnout for the book but there you go see it's still leaking from her her anal area as well i'm not 100 percent sure what is going on with her the bull is definitely definitely 
intrigued by her as well. You see, look how he's smelling wherever she's discharged. What's going on? Like I said, I have no idea, but it is slightly concerning to, to say the least. We often become so vested in these animals and it's sometimes very difficult to watch these kind of things where you see an animal that's not quite right and you can't understand what's going on. Obviously we can't speak to them and they can't speak to us and it becomes very difficult to know what actually is going through that elephant's mind or whether or not this could be something that is very serious. And like I say, I'm not a vet, so for me I don't know if those kind of symptoms are anything to worry about or if it's just something that will pass and with her, I've just never seen it before, and that's where it becomes a bit worrying. So, H. Macy, you say if something happens to the matriarch, is there a next in line? Yes, there will most definitely be. So there will be another senior female that will lead the herd around and take her around and show what goes on, and she will have learned from that matriarch. So it will definitely happen that another one will pull into it and fill into that area. So you'll see that that's not too much of a stress for the herd. Obviously, the herd would go through a period of quite a lot of stress just in that situation where they lost the matriarch because it will be a massive change for them, and they rely quite heavily on the matriarch at times and so it will definitely be a little bit of a stressful period but there will be another female that will take over and become the matriarch of that particular herd now if they go into this thicket on the left I'm going to leave her there because I don't want to go crashing around her and stressing her any more than she is the rest of the herd is just feeding off to our left here they're all in the thicket here so she's going back to where the herd is which is where she needs to be particularly if she's not feeling well you don't want her to be sort of harassed by any sort of predator and if she goes back into the herd section and it's, it's not very sort of, and it gets too thick, I'm going to leave her there and let her just carry on with her day. I don't want to stress her in any way. But the bull is kind of right behind her the whole time. He's just on my left hand side here. And so is she. And the rest of the herd is just behind them. I can actually see most of the herd behind them at, as we speak. So I'm just going to go around. Okay, girl. That's okay. What's wrong? She's come right up next to the side of the car, so I'm just getting quite quiet because I don't want her to feel like we're challenging her in any way. But she's definitely been leaking quite a bit all afternoon because she's got lots of fluid it almost looks like a male in must but isn't this incredible we've got her in front the young male to our left who's going to come into picture now okay guys i'm really not sure what's going on with her shame my girl you're not feeling well i'm trying to see if there isn't maybe a wound somewhere on her but i can't see now she is like i say the bull is right here as well so you just behave yourself because you're being naughty chasing her stop chasing her around and he's far too young to mate so it's not one that we have to worry about but she's now coming around the back of us so she's now going back towards her herd which is actually the best thing that could have happened i'm quite glad that she's come around the side and she can then maybe head back towards where her herd is now what could have happened as well is she might have had a miscarriage earlier and this is just the body's response now. So we're just seeing the back end of it and that's why she's still a little bit sort of... No, leave her alone, you naughty bull. You can see she's trying to get away from the bull elephant and she almost comes to us every time. Leave her. No, I don't know what his problem is. Leave her alone, come on. It's okay, my girl. She is right next to us as well now. They're just kind of doing this sort of circular motion around us at this stage, and I actually have no idea why. Maybe he's just really interested in what's wrong with her, but this is the most unbelievable thing. To have these elephants kind of just going circular motions around us really is super interesting. It's okay, girl. Um, she's dribbling again. Leave her alone. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. You see, he's smelling her urine again. So he's trying to see if she's possibly in heat. Look, there we go. He's smelling on the ground. 
You can see there, you see he's got his trunk down and sniffing where she just dribbled. Now I wonder if she's, maybe she's coming into heat as well, I don't know. What's going on? But I feel like we are part of this whole thing now. They are really kind of on both sides of us at the moment. Are you okay, my girl? This is one of the most incredible interactions I've ever had with an elephant. We've got, like I say, a bull on one side, a female on the other. And they are within meters of this car. They are really, I would say, a meter on either side. And they are actually throwing dust all over themselves and we are being covered in it. This is so so interesting but I'm just glad that she's able to use us almost as a barrier between him and her at this stage I just don't want him to harass her too much I know that's a selfish thing to say and we shouldn't be like that but I also don't want to move too much they both are so close to us at the moment that any sort of movement might cause a bit of a fluster amongst them and I don't want her to feel any more stressed than she probably already is. The interesting part about all of this is I'm watching her temporal glands and the entire time with, where we've been with her, her temporal glands are not leaking, which means that she's not emotionally stressed. Which, so that tells me that she maybe knows what's going on with her and she's been through this before and that she's not actually showing a visible sort of stress sign, which is really interesting. What's wrong, my girl? Are you okay? I can honestly say this is one of the most special moments that I have ever been in. To sit with a female that is this close. Female elephants generally are not this relaxed around you and allow you to get this close. So for her to sit as close as she is right now and for her to be in this sort of more compromised state and to be able to spend time right next to her, it is a feeling that I can't really describe to you. And I don't know about any of you, but maybe this is a good time for some of you to have a one word tweet as to what you would feel if you were in this situation and you had this beautiful female right next to you and sort of didn't know what was going on. I think my one word would be just uncertainty. While this is the most amazing thing I've experienced, it's just I'm so uncertain as to what's going on. I don't know what her issue is. But I am so intrigued by this whole process as well as kind of a bit worried really, to be honest with you. And So a lot of you are wondering if she's asking us for help. Well, no, she's not asking us for help. She's just using us as a barrier. You see, every time the bull moves, she moves with him. So she's coming around, and we almost like this little barrier between her and the male itself. So she's using us much like she would use a tree in this essence. So she's not asking us for help. Earlier, when we were parked with her, she didn't come close to us at all. So I'm trying not to move too much. So if I'm just sitting at an awkward angle and not looking the right way, I do apologize. She's just so close that if I shift in my seat, I don't want to give her a fright. But I don't think she's asking us for help. She's not putting her trunk out towards us in any way. She's not in any way being sort of showing any visual cues other than that. She's just watching the male. So where the male moves, she moves the opposite of that. My girl, what's going on? You are a very special elephant, you know that. Sure, this is one of the most amazing experiences I've ever been a part of. Okay. Hmm. This is incredible. It's sometimes just just to sit and sit quietly next to them is probably more value right now than me going and talking. So I'm going to keep quiet for a little bit and just listen to the herd. I'm hoping they're going to start talking to one another because the herd is approaching slowly. not emotionally charged because like I said she wouldn't be right near us like this she also would be leaking heavily from that temporal gland which she's not so I have no idea what's going on with her look how she's curled her trunk up oh, she's just dropped it now but she has curled it up next to her see now the male is coming around again so you see now she moves to the other side of us again but look at her sun sort of dust bathing 
and this amount of dust bathing is also uncommon for an elephant you would you know she's been doing it all afternoon so I don't know quite what the situation is now the male's coming around again you just leave her alone stop it now she's it almost looks like a female that's in must in a way she's you can see dribbling again what's going on what are you worried about this Now go to your herd. The rest of the females are there. They'll look after you. Come on. Off you go. Go to your herd. Okay. 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 You two just behave yourselves now. But that is about as close as it will ever get to a female elephant. And Okay. You can't sit here. Don't sit here, my girl. I'm just trying to let her have sort of her space and not move around too much it's the male that's causing her to stress at this stage because he's just following her all over the place but they really are like I say right around us at the moment you stay there behave yourself stop being naughty now the reason why I'm not worried about him giving us too much trouble is because he's a young male so if I shout at him and give him a bit of a talking to he will go away because he's still concerned about us you can see every now and then he gets sort of a bit flustered by the fact that I'm here and so I'm not worried about him I'm worried about her feeling that she's being too stressed out by all of this but she's definitely using us like she would use a tree it's the exact same process yes go that way there we go that's it well done clever girl there we go there's the rest of your herd go and spend time with them they'll look after you there we go Now the bull's on his way towards her, but the rest of the herd is there, and I'm hoping the other females don't tolerate this bull's nonsense, and they push him away a little bit. Wow, what an amazing experience that was. I honestly can't tell you how incredible that was. That is probably one of the most special sightings I have ever had in my life. I have never, ever, ever experienced anything like that. That was unbelievable but we're going to try and just see what plays out here and I'm going to try and see if we can follow them a little bit we'll put the infrared lights on so we don't disturb them and while we do that it's time for Brent to say his goodbyes so let's go across all the way to the Mara for Brent to say goodbye I'm not Tristan but because the saga is still playing out she's still right near us and I the more I watch her the more I don't think she's sick the more I think it's something to do with birthing or miscarriage or one of those two maybe she's just had a maybe she has a very small calf inside there that we just haven't seen that she's that heavily pregnant I don't know but there's definitely it looks like that she's when she pushes her back legs out and she kind of it looks like she's prepping to give birth the, the elephant that I've seen give birth she stood in the exact same way as that this elephant was standing and sort of the behavior is not quite the same but it's very similar so I would imagine if it's a miscarriage there would be some sort of pain involved and some sort of confusion and that's maybe leading to some of the behavior that we're seeing but the more I watch her the more it looks like a birthing thing more than a more than an actual that she's sick or ill because you see she stretches her legs and they often do that when they birth so that the distance between where they give birth and the baby falling to the ground is so much less so that could be sort of the signs that they do that and she's not wobbly on her feet she's not like I say secreting from the temporal glands there's no mucus coming out of her mouth or out of her trunk so the only thing I can think is that there's some sort of labor induced issue going on now I do apologize for the aerial but she literally is standing so close to us that I can't move at all and she's moving around in circles and so we will see a sort of sign of her coming back around and the poles will all be out of the way she was standing right next to us but then the naughty bull came, came down again now are you gonna feed that's good news if you do start feeding but this is so I know Lou is reminding me about the fact that we saw the placenta and I've been thinking about it the whole time but that wasn't this herd so I saw that herd in the morning on bushwalk and it wasn't Fang's herd although I didn't see Fang so it might have been her herd and maybe it is her maybe she's going through this sort of 
process where she's having a miscarriage and that's that placenta that we've been finding and over the last two days this is what's been going on it could very well be this whole saga is playing out from already three days ago it, it is the most interesting thing that I've ever seen when it comes to elephants and it just goes to show you how little we actually understand about them so you can see she's just kind of going behind the vehicle and like I say she's right behind us and I don't want to stress her in any way and I don't want to make her feel like she has to move it's better that she stays where she needs to be and we kind of leave her where she is you can see the rest of the herd is right here in front of me at the moment so that's fine the rest of the herd is here and they are around now our naughty bull is back again you stay where you are why are you coming back again enough now stop it now she's coming back to this side my girl what's going on She's right next to the car again because the bull is just coming towards her. What's going on, girl? Are you okay, my girl? I think the bull is more just curious than anything else. He's a young male and he probably doesn't quite know what's going on himself. And so he's probably just sniffing because there's all kinds of smells going on here. Oh, let me just, sorry, get out of the way there, Jandre, so you can see what I was talking about. You see how she keeps squatting a little bit? And he's smelling around her backside as well. What's going on between the two of you? Hmm? And back to the game that we were playing earlier where they go round and round us again. Although it seems like a young male's now going to get involved too. I honestly have no idea what is going on with this elephant and what the rest of the herd is responding to but there's definitely a whole bunch of communication happening here that we have no idea about and we are just being absolutely privileged to be a part of this and to actually witness this this is without a doubt the my most this will always be my most memorable elephant sighting So Vern, you're wondering if a herd would sense if something was wrong, most definitely. I've seen it with elephants before when as soon as something is wrong, the herd most definitely senses there's an issue and they all come running to the aid, particularly in a case where you've got the matriarch like this that is in some sort of distress. So they would then feel like if there was a problem that they should come and defend her. Now you also stop it now. What is wrong with the young bulls this afternoon? You can see I've got another one here that's starting. Yes, go, go. You're being naughty now. So the rest of the herd would definitely have that sense of there's a problem and they would come and try and help out. You can see the herd itself is actually quite relaxed. They're not moving around too much. They're all sitting feeding. And so that's why I think it's something to do with a birthing situation because they would have all seen this before. If a female is gonna give birth, they've all been through it. There's all babies inside here and they know the discomfort and the stress that the female will go through during that process. And so that's maybe why the rest of the herd is not responding in any way whatsoever. <coughs> They're all just feeding, excuse me, sorry, there's a bit of dust from all of the elephants throwing dust around. And so the rest of them are just feeding and taking it very easy. Now they're walking because Fang has gone all the way around and she's actually gonna pop out somewhere in front of us here. And they're all moving towards where she's going. But the bull, the bigger bull, is what's upsetting the apple cart, so to speak. The, he's the one that's causing this movement of the herd. Whenever he comes around, all the young males move, all the females take a bit of a turn. So it seems like he is the sort of cause of a lot of the sort of frustration at this stage with some of the others out here. But she herself is not stressed with us as well. She's not showing any sign that she's in any way upset with us being close by to her or us being anywhere in the vicinity of the herd. The rest of the herd is not being aggressive to us. We have not seen ears flayed. We have not seen any signs of her sort of being stressed out with us as a sort of entity. So it really is just the most incredible behavior and something I really am not sure about. Now, Fang is quite far away, so if you do hear a bit of scratching and branches breaking, that's okay. She, I'm not gonna be stressing her out too much. She's quite a long way away from where we are already. She's going back towards quarantine clearings now. The other thing about an elephant giving birth is, I don't know that much about it, and not many people do, because it's not something you're gonna be able to see every single day. And from what I've read about it and what I've seen in a lot of the videos I've watched and just kind of looking to research this kind of thing, that most elephants will spend time giving birth 
on roads and sandy areas and open areas and we've seen her today every time she sits or squats it's on a sandy road section or in the middle of the quarantine clearings that's where she keeps kind of going to so it's interesting behavior in, in that regard and I'm honestly have no idea how else to explain this I don't know what else it could be I don't think she's ill I don't think we need to be concerned that she's going to be sort of die from this but it's definitely something is not a hundred percent right and it's not her normal behavior and that's all I can really explain for sure now she's just here in front now here we go so this is so beautiful because we've actually got a crescent moon above her at the moment which is very pretty now I'm gonna just try and see if we can't get there we go so she's just off to my side so there's the crescent moon and you can just make out Fang now. Unfortunately, it's going to be a bit bright if we try and expose for her because it will burn out the sky. But there we go, the crescent moon and the infrared light together. And there she is. As you see, she's starting to do that squat again a little bit. I would love to know. I would love to be able to talk to her now and know what's going on and know if we should be very concerned or if that everything is going to be okay. It's really just such a difficult thing to be a part of you. Like I said, it, we shouldn't get emotionally invested because they are wild animals and we don't look after them in any way, but you do. You, we spend so much time with them and in a way we do have a responsibility to look after them and to make sure that they're okay. As numbers of all of these species start declining in the world, it almost is our responsibility to make sure that these animals are in some way not distressed and, and are doing okay. So Mia, you're saying you wonder if they get in urinary tract, urinary tract infections. Sorry, my getting a bit tongue-tied there. Um, I suppose it's possible, Mia. I don't know. Like I say, I, I mean, I'm not a vet, and so I don't really know a lot of the sort of diseases that elephants can suffer from. I just know that they are quite resilient animals, and in, in, in most of the time that I've spent with them, the only things that they really kind of can be susceptible towards is pretty much um, anthrax is a big one, and other than that, not very much at all. They seem to be sort of resilient to most of the others. Interestingly enough, there was an elephant that was found with TB recently in the Kruger National Park section. And the most interesting point about that is not uncommon for an elephant to show positive for TB. But the fact that the elephant was TB positive with human strain TB, which means it's coming to contact with TB from a human somewhere. Now, I know this is a whole sort of situation, but that image there almost reflects the mood of the situation eerie dust around her with that glowing eye in these wooded thickets there's just something about that picture that is kind of very very fitting for the mood of what is going on now you see look how she's raising her head and that is because her bull is approaching her again so you can see the bull is providing her just an, an irritation more than anything else she doesn't do that with us at all just with this male when he comes along But it would be interesting to know, I, I suppose that they should every now and then suffer from urinary tract infections, but at the end of the day, elephants are so resilient that they tend to be able to get over things like that. This to me is more something to do with a reproductive situation or, like I say, a miscarriage or a birth that's not quite happening. I would say miscarriage because she's definitely not round enough to have a, a fully developed calf inside there so miscarriage would be my guess and like we say we have found bits of placenta um, around and Rexon and I were actually funny enough talking about it this morning and we were saying that it could be an indication of a female that is having a problem with her birth and this behavior that we're seeing right now is very indicative of something like that so I reckon that that is what is happening at the moment it's something to do with a miscarriage I just want to turn around I'm not going to go too close to her while the bulls after her but let's just turn Right, so we, while we kind of just see how this all plays out for a little bit longer, let's go across to Jamie, who's driving into the sunset and hopefully is going to have some good news for us. Well, we are. We've left Fang because she went into a thicket. And like I was saying earlier, I really didn't want to follow her through thick vegetation and cause any disturbance other than what she's already going through. So I felt it was better for us just to leave her, let her do her thing and carry on. She keeps trying to go back to quarantine, so I wouldn't be surprised she spends a lot of time there and that that herd is very close in the morning and I definitely first thing tomorrow morning want to try and see if I can't find them and just see how she's doing and see it hopefully that she's okay it's, I mean that has got to be one of the most incredible elephant experiences of my life and honestly I have no words really to describe it I was when it was just 
pulled away from the, ele the elephants now. I was saying to Jandre that I actually at one point was getting speechless because I didn't really know what to say and it, it was quite a moving sort of experience, I must be honest, and I, it was just something that I'll never, ever, ever forget and that is one of the most special things to witness and many of us will go many, 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 many years without seeing anything like that behavior that we saw this afternoon and being in the, sort of that proximity to an elephant herd is one of the most amazing things I've ever done. jean Ray was telling me at one point that his focus on her eye was at 1.5 meters. So that just gives you an idea of just how close she was to the side of the car at one point. And she was that close and on the other side was the male at the same distance. So it was really just a mind-blowing experience and something that we can probably never replicate. Now we are at the den and the den is inactive. There is no little 